Hi there and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life and we are starting to get prepped for Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. I know that would be in the United States and there's other Thanksgiving types of celebrations in other parts of the world. So wherever you are, happy Thanksgiving to you in whatever way you celebrate. All right, it is. I keep looking up at the clock because I'm just trying to think uh, time-wise. So I have my big roaster up here and in here, well first I'll tell you I have it set at 225 degrees and in here I have four wild turkey legs and two complete wild turkey breasts. I also put in there about eight cups of water uh, to offer some moisture to it. And I also seasoned it with a pretty heavy pretty heavy dose of the Mrs. Dash chicken grilling blends seasoning. Just smelled good to me. I also sprinkled on a little bit of rosemary and a little bit of ground sage as well. I don't know how long I'm going to let this roast. I'm just going to keep on checking it until it's cooked all the way through and tender. I don't have to make a ton of food for Thanksgiving, even though we will have here I should think about how many people are going to be here. I'll think about that in a second and let you know. But I don't have to do a lot of food because everybody brings something. So if I have it in my head correctly, I'm doing the turkey, which this is the wild turkey. I also am going to be cooking, uh, and this is probably about 10 pounds, maybe a little over 10 pounds of wild turkey. And then I'm also going to be doing a 21 pound butterball from... I got that one at Aldi. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing two pumpkin pies, which I'm pretty sure I already have the crusts in the freezer. Well, I'm gonna have to dig around in there, but I'm pretty sure that I do have uh, homemade crusts already ready to go in the freezer. And I'm going to be doing some squash, just roasted squash. I'm not gonna do anything fancy to it other than add butter and a little bit of brown sugar and salt at the very end, salt and pepper. Um, but so nothing fancy with that. And I also will be putting together a brandy slush as well as some other type of punch. Um, I just have to think. So the turkey, oh, and I always provide the cranberry sauce, of course, and I already have that made because I made jellied cranberry sauce when, like, once harvest was over. I can't remember exactly when that was, but I took a, a day and I did, like, 46 or something uh, pints of cranberry sauce. We've been eating through that really fast, <laughs> but I do know that we have plenty for Thanksgiving. So that is, that's pretty much what I have to provide. We do have like the setup of the house and the tables and all that kind of thing to take care of as well as getting some uh, like mixer party games going. Since we're not all family, uh, it's just kind of fun to have a couple games that get people kind of mixing and talking and sharing and that kind of thing. So I also have to plan that. Well, good morning. Um, let me just take you through what happened last night. So late last night, somewhere around probably between like 9.30 and 10.15, I pulled the meat off of the wild turkey legs. Two of the legs, sometimes you have to just cut your losses and they did not soften at all. They almost cooked and just became like rocks. <laughs> so those are just gonna have to go. Um, but the other two were absolutely beautiful. I also sliced all of the turkey breast. I put all of that meat into a crock pot and I strained off the broth that it that it made with the water and everything that I had added. I poured the drippings over the top of the meat, put the lid on, put the crock pot in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow, which will be Thanksgiving, I'll pull that out in the morning um, or mid-morning, and I will put that on to warm um, for a little while, and then low for a little while, then back to warm. I'll just watch it throughout the day. That's really, that's really what I'll be doing. Now this morning what I already did 
is I just pulled out the pie crusts and they feel just right for rolling out. I also had one store-bought pie crust left. This was from when I did the blueberry pies and I wanted to show you guys how you can make the blueberry pie with a frozen, you know, a store-bought pie crust and the can of blueberry pie filling. So that was left from when I did that. I also made homemade pie crust. So I am going to make three pumpkin pies today. I know that what I'll probably do is keep one of the pumpkin pies like put away so that we have one on Friday and or Saturday because I'm pretty sure pumpkin is like one of the first to go in our family and then sometimes people don't get a piece because they kind of run anyway. And then in this pie crust, I just thought I would make a cranberry nut pie. Not for Thanksgiving, but just for today because, you know, you still have to eat even though it's the day before Thanksgiving. Do you guys all, you're like prepping food for Thanksgiving and then you forget that you actually have to make food for today too? <laughs> Something else has to be cut out from the day so that you can cook for today, cook for tomorrow, and yeah, just something has to be cut out. So for today, just for our enjoyment, I am making a cranberry nut pie. I mentioned to you before that I had this pie crust in the freezer and I just rinsed up two cups of fresh cranberries. You can use frozen as well. That works just, just fine. All right, I have about a half a cup of chopped walnuts. That looks good. And then one third cup. I don't really pack that in there because I just don't. We don't need it super, super sweet. This will be sweet enough. I'm going to melt that one third cup of butter. Okay, I have a scant one third cup of sugar. This recipe is in cookbook number one on page 56. And I don't know when this video is actually going to get up, but through midnight on Cyber Monday, Everything at my website is shipping for $1 for your, for your whole shipment. Not each item a dollar, but whether you order one cookbook or two cookbooks or you order a sticker or a spatula, whatever. Everything ships for a dollar. One egg. We're just going to get this all mixed to a thick little dough. Joe, did you get everything to the dumpster? Yes. Thank you. And then we're going to spread this over the top. Okay, you guys can see this pie literally takes under 10 minutes if you start with a ready-made pie crust. All right, so there's background music today. That's courtesy of Joe. We are not clubbing it today, but we are at the Honky Tonk Bar. And yeah, he's just a jamming out to Luke Bryan and whoever else, probably Morgan Wallen. <laughs> okay, so I just get this to the edge, put this in the oven at 325 degrees for about 45 minutes. As always, I always start checking things ahead of time. So maybe even 40 minutes, I'll take a peek at this and see how it's coming along. Talk. All right, I'll, we'll, we'll find it, honey. So I'm feeling hot. I had to take off my sweater and I'm feeling a little bit frazzled for the moment here. We just had uh, the nest, well, it's not a nest but my roaster. What? Yeah, 
<laughs> Maria is calling it an oil spill. <laughs> yeah. So all of the scraps, all of the meat scraps that were left, and I threw in a moldy loaf of bread, and I threw in some soft cranberries, and I don't even know what else was in this. And I'd set it on the edge of the counter to have Peter take it out to scrape it all for the chickens. And that hit the floor right there. So we've just been spending the last, uh, I don't know how long. Normally you think, well, when we're all done cooking, we'll like wash the kitchen floor and get it all looking good. Well, we had to wash it and degrease it now. So Maria's working on pumpkin pie though. Yeah. We're doing the three, so she's doing a triple. Almost forgot to put in two more cans of pumpkin, but we got it squared away. And I am going to finally now, at noon, start, is it noon? Yes, at noon, finally start rolling out the pie crusts. They are so thawed. Remember before they were like still chilled and they were going to be just perfect for rolling out. Now they're going to be a little on the soft side. I, this pie and that cheesecake pie with whipped cream and chocolate yep. drizzled over the strawberries. <laughs> the, that and pumpkin pie are the only two pies I like. I'm not a big fan of fruit pies. Mm -hmm. That's why I always want you to make pumpkin pie for this. It would not be Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. It's not going to be big enough. That's going to be awfully little. Okay. I'm too big. On the very next page, page 57 of cookbook one, is where the pumpkin pie recipe is. And you guys, this is just the Libby's famous pumpkin pie, straight off the back of the old Libby's can. I don't know if it's still the same recipe, but this is the one that I grew up using. And it was, uh, my mom had snipped the recipe off the back of the can and I had that. I still have it. <laughs> it's probably from like, probably from the seventies. So as I finish up this third pie crust here, I had Maria look up, is this also in cookbook number one? <laughs> mm. Cranberry party punch on page four. And so we are gonna start, I think. It needs pink lemonade and frozen orange Ooh, juice. Ooh, shoot, it needs pink lemonade. We might have some Kool-Aid. Um, but it uses like frozen concentrate pink lemonade, right? Ooh, we need pineapple juice too. Ooh. We it needs frozen. Six ounce can of frozen pink lemonade, six ounce concentrate, they're all concentrate, mm -hmm. six ounce can of frozen orange juice, which we have, six ounce can of frozen pineapple juice. Ooh. So you kind of have to think ahead if you're making this. <laughs> <laughs> good call, Maria, good call. <laughs> well, we could just forget the, the pink lemonade, lemonade in there. Pineapple? And what we could do is just do, like, do we have pineapple juice? In the, it would be in a can. In where? In the pantry. Mm -hmm. Maybe on the first yeah. shelf, way in the back. Do you know what I'm talking? All right, I completely forgot to check my pie a little bit early. Those are for bread. Bread. Mm -hmm. Those are bread. But I just checked on it. It actually could go a couple more minutes. All right, well, this side of the crust is a little low. We'll just squeeze it. And I always come back to a, a good tasting, I mean, a, a pretty looking pie makes people want to have a piece, but a good tasting pie is what keeps them coming back. So even if it doesn't look perfect, perfect, perfect around the edge, it'll still do. Okay, we're just gonna make some kind of punch work. We won't make all the ingredients today, honey, or mix up the punch today because 
we're just not going to. But I think I think we can make something work tomorrow, okay? Okay, so put these back. Um, no, they need to thaw. Put them in the fridge. Put all the concentrates in the fridge for tomorrow. No, no. The two for my brandy slush need to be out today. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Can we get this figured out? Um, let's pour in the, the, the pumpkin. So how do we know how much? Well, we're just going to do it my until it's a good. mixture is done. Daddy is back. Yeah, yeah. Daddy is back. Yeah, yeah. Daddy, 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 daddy. Okay. And we may come back and add some, but I just want to make sure that the big one has enough. Okay, cranberry nut pie has come out of the oven. I'm going to move this over to a wire rack so that it can cool because, you know, the top of the stove is a little warm right now, but we want this to cool because we're going to actually have that with supper tonight. And here are the three pumpkin pies. Each one has a little bit different uh, edge just because it was really based on the amount of pie crust that I had available. So this one I just had to fork. This one I did kind of my normal sort of twisted rope. And then this one I just kind of did like a pinch just to kind of bring it up a little bit. All right, let's get these in the oven for whatever it says. What does it say over there, Maria? Do I have to set the timer, set it for 425? Um. All right, we'll get that preheating. Then we're going to get the pies in. We'll do what it says, bake for 15 minutes at 425, then turn the heat down to 350, is that correct, and bake for another 40? Mm -hmm. Okay, I pretty much have that memorized. <laughs> so, so we do have to eat today. So I'm just making up some quick scrambled eggs. Maria is frying up a tenderloin from one of the deer. I think it's from Peter's dough that he shot on opening day. We're having hash brown patties, scrambled eggs with tenderloin, some applesauce. I turned it down to low now. And yeah, we kind of want the eggs just to set up for just a second and then we'll kind of start spreading everything around. We've got the hash brown patties going here. I have applesauce. This is needs to thaw. I have I just pulled out this raw um, chicken thighs and I have some pork sausage. So I want to get these things cooked up and I'm going to do something with this chicken. It's only four. One, two, I think it's only four thighs. So I'm going to do something with this. I don't know exactly what yet. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the pork sausage either. But I am going to cook those both up. And probably that is going to become supper tonight. For tonight's supper, I told you I was going to use that chicken and the sausage. What I found to do is out of this Instant Pot cookbook, I am going to make the chicken noodle soup recipe. I've never made a soup Oh, I shouldn't say never. Maybe I've made a soup in the Instant Pot before. So in here I have celery, onion, bay leaves, oregano, salt, and pepper, and water. I need to go down to the garden and grab a couple of carrots, take the skin off the chicken thighs, and get those in here. And then we'll pressure cook this for about 20 minutes. Carrots from the garden. I know I keep saying this, that I feel like my days are numbered with keeping them in there, but maybe not. Every time I pull, they're still just as good. I think I mentioned a minute ago that I actually had to put the carrots in here as well, but they don't go in yet. So I'm going to get the pressure cooker covered and set to 20 minutes. So a while back, I put together bread mixes. So this is my 60 minute mini loaf, mini white loaf bread. If you make it the way it is in here, it is a 60 minute bread. And I often will do this like with kids or groups of kids and, and it works really well. Anyway, what I did is I just made a bunch of mixes. So let me get this one. Well, I'm not gonna open it quite yet but I have all the dry ingredients in here. It's just flour, salt, and yeast. I mean, it's just those three things, but it does make it very easy for me to go and make like six of these at once. And then when I wanna make bread, I just need to get out 
This is milk and water, warm. And I need two tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of honey. And I put all of that in here and then I dump that dry mix on top. And then I have bread going in the bread machine in just a couple of minutes. always grow an acorn squash and you cut into an acorn squash which I think are actually seemed harder to cut into than this butternut squash but then it's just kind of stringy inside and you just scoop it out and it's real wet and it's real easy to just scoop out and scrape clean. This was like you know those little kits that kids get for Christmas and they're like a little like uh what do they call those those little kits where it'll have a little like chip and a little pick and it'll be some sort of like pretend dinosaur bones encased in concrete or some in plaster plaster of Paris that is what this was like <laughs> trying to excavate the seeds well anyway now my fingers hurt from pushing on the spoon but I'm gonna get this into the oven Emily said that she made butternut squash the other day I, I gave her one and she said she just put it face down. I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look it up or call her if I have to cover it or not. But she put it in the oven at, I think, a pretty low temp for about an hour and a half. So the first round in the Instant Pot is done. I let it naturally release for 15 minutes. Now I'm going to allow the rest of the steam to escape. Once that's done, I will turn the lid, take it off. I have two more cups of water. I measured out eight ounces of pasta. The recipe calls for linguine. I did not have that, but I thought that this would have kind of a similar thickness to it. Maria has all the carrots cut up. Can you believe this is only two carrots? <laughs> and we've already been kind of picking at them a little bit here too. So I'm not going to put all those carrots in because I just, I don't, I don't think I have the space in this soup for that many. I need to take the chicken out. I'm going to put that in though like that. I just want to use the same container. So I will take the chicken thighs and just put them right in there. Soup in the Instant Pot here, it only had to go an additional five minutes. So I let it do that. I fished out the bay leaves. The chicken thighs were cool enough for me to handle. So I have all of my meat right here. We're gonna get that put in. And I'm gonna use my tongs here and stir this. And I think, let's try one of those noodles. How hot is that? Whew. Okay, let's try. All right, I definitely think this is gonna need some more salt. I have Maria in the background. She's doing some dishes right now. And I just dumped out the bread here. I'm just going to kind of roll it around a little bit and then shape it. 
you know what, I forgot to get my bread pan out, so I better do that before my hands are really, really dirty. Oh, this is so soft. Wow, that feels so good. The kitchen is pretty warm, so that is going to rise pretty quick. I just need to grab a dish towel. Oh, I like this one the best. <laughs> Can I see what I look like quick? Bubbles all over your face. Oh, I don't have enough. Yeah, they kind of, <laughs> they kind of popped right away. So I'm just going to get that covered, let that rise. The squash has only 22 minutes left which I'm pretty sure that the bread is probably going to rise within that time because it is warm, warm in here. I'm gonna take a little moment, get a few things cleaned up. I'm gonna help Maria rinse if she would ever get a dish washed here. I'm getting them washed. <laughs> You're getting them washed? It's a work in progress. Okay. Um, See, I washed one. There you go, very good. I also have to get my sausage frying up because, did I men mention that with that sausage I decided to make uh, sausage gravy tonight? So we'll do, I know it's like a weird combination, but it's just what I have and I just didn't want to have to thaw anything new. So um, we've got a couple of hunters here for supper tonight. So I think between the soup and the bread, and the sausage gravy. I have one little tube of biscuits that in the fridge. I'll make those and between all of that I think we'll be able to make a supper. So I have my sausage cooked up and it wasn't quite enough fat so I added a couple of tablespoons of butter. And as soon as that melts, I'm going to turn this to low. And I'm going to sprinkle in about somewhere between a somewhere between a third and a half cup of flour. I'm just going to stir that until this soaks in, until it like absorbs all the flour. And I'm going to put some pepper in here, a touch of basil, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. All right, I know this isn't a great camera angle, but I have to work and do this quickly because I don't want this to burn. I'm just gonna stir in the milk gradually, scraping the bottom. I wanna get all those little bits. The squash is gonna be done in just about 15 seconds. Turn up the heat now because I want this to thicken. And I'm going to add in some seasoned salt. I have written in the recipe one to two teaspoons. Now that would be if you were gonna be making two pounds of pork sausage, and since this is only one pound, that's going to be a half to one, right? So I tasted it. It does taste a little bit salty. I can taste the salt, so I'm gonna err on the side of lighter. But I do think it needs more pepper. squash out. And there's the squash. And the bread has not risen yet. So we are going to continue to let that rise. Good. This is just bubbling. Let me bring this down and show you guys. 
See how it's just bubbling around the edge? That's perfect because that means it's cooking the like gluey flavor out of the flour. You want to make sure that you do cook flour when you're making something like a gravy or a roux or something like that because if all you do is add it in until it thickens but it doesn't ever actually come to a boil, even just a real low boil, it's going to taste like glue. So just kind of stir it around. And this could be a little bit thicker, although once it, as it cools, it will thicken. Whoops, I just spilled it over the edge. I'm just gonna let it do this for about a minute. Maybe not even. And then I'm literally gonna put just a pinch of basil and a splash of Worcestershire sauce. See how it settles on the bottom? Haven't said that in a while to you guys. I know there's always new people here. Welcome if you are brand new here. This is a really fun time of year for us. We started out in October with cranberry harvest. Well, September and October with cranberry harvest. And then we go into deer season and Thanksgiving and then all the Christmas prep and the cooking and everything that goes along. So yeah, welcome and thanks for stopping by and I hope that you subscribe and come back again. All right, so. But as I was saying, that's something I hadn't said in a long time, is that the like like the thickness or whatever, the, the flavoring, the seasonings settle out in Worcestershire sauce. And if you want the full flavor, you gotta shake it up before you use it. Okay, now if I could keep this at this consistency right here, that would be perfect. I know as it cools, it's gonna get a little thicker. But this is perfect right here. So another thing that's going on today is Warren has been cutting meat um, and he's actually flooding because it's supposed to get really cold and so he needs to bring the water up in the ditches on the cranberry marsh. He brought in these back straps and now I'm going to trim them up the way I like to have them trimmed and I'm going to cut these into steaks as well as some mini roasts. And so, yeah, this is what he does. He just brings in kind of the back straps like this. And I don't really know what else. There might be a little, like, flank steak down there or something else. And I'm just going to get this cut and packaged. As I cut here, I also trim up if there's any, um, like, just anything, any little, I don't know if you call it sinew, connective tissue that I don't want on it. If I happen to find, like, a hair, Warren is really, really good about that. But if I happen to find a hair or, you know, just something something that I don't want in my meat. That is really the key to having good quality venison that when you go to your freezer, you, you look at it and you want to thaw it. There's nothing worse than going to your freezer and not wanting to thaw whatever the hunk of meat is that's in there. Cause you're like, Ugh. that's honestly, you guys, that's kind of how wild turkey is for me. I, I'm not, not, I'm not a fan of having to cook wild turkey. Although the turkey that I cut up, or that I cooked up yesterday, it really turned out quite nicely. Five and six. I usually plan one mini roast per person, and I will double wrap these. So first in a Ziploc bag or saran wrap, but you guys are actually sitting on the <laughs> package of saran wrap. It was the right height with the right... Uh, decline to see what I was doing and so I thought I would just grab freezer bags tonight. Try to do it at one piece, but this is going to be a three piece for some reason. Then you're going to put it on the scale, weigh it, and label it. Okay, so you want the point towards you, and then put the meat in there with just a, it, a little bit to the right. And now you fold up the first piece nice and tight. Everything you do is as tight as you possibly can. Roll the meat over once, roll everything over once. And then when you get, if it gets a little crooked, that, that's okay. Now fold in from the right, and now fold in from the left. That one's really good. Roll it over to get the point down. 
rest it up against your belly to hold it in place. <laughs> piece of tape and when you get really good almost you will always just need one piece of tape how about this piece that's okay that okay. looks really good now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it on the scale and you're gonna weigh it and you're gonna label it uh, mini roasts I'm gonna start scraping the squash out from the skin and I just sprayed this little tiny casserole dish. Isn't this one cute? And I think it's going to be just the right size for the squash. It'll fill it up. Why is like that so caved in? Because it just sunk down. Because there wasn't as much flesh there. That's weird. So see, you're just scooping it. But the goal is to not get the skin. Yeah. I don't know who's going to eat this squash. Um, I'm going to eat this squash. <laughs> I'm not. Emily's going to eat this squash. I'm not. Carrie's going to eat this squash. I'm not. <laughs> I definitely am not. But I'll eat the turkey. And I'll eat the stuffing. And I'll eat the pumpkin pie. <laughs> but I won't eat the squash. Everybody has their favorite part of Thanksgiving. Mine dinner. is a pumpkin pie. Like, <laughs> no. no question. Okay. Besides the dessert, Maria, um, what would be your favorite? Okay. Stuffing. Good call. That I like stuffing. That would be my favorite, too. Okay, let's get that flipped over. Ooh, and you, yeah, you scoop that in here. I'm going to put some butter in here while you're doing this. the squash is in the refrigerator I just foiled it in that little pan the battery wore out and I wasn't about to stop in the middle of that um, so I added for like one pretty good sized squash I added about um, two tablespoons of butter maybe two tablespoons of brown sugar a little salt a little pepper stirred it all up put it in there I took a bite of it it is so good I love squash does anybody else love squash <laughs> did you guys hear that conversation between me and Maria Who's going to eat squash? I will. All the I go through all the people. She's like, I won't. So I have one last can of these biscuits. These were discounted to 50 cents when I was shopping at IGA one day. Ooh, so I bought eight of them. And since we're having the biscuits and gravy for supper, look at how funny those are. They're not even round. I could kind of reshape them, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get these into the oven in just a little bit, though. I'm still waiting for the bread to rise all the way. I was hoping with the kitchen being as warm as it was, or as warm as it is, I was hoping the bread would rise a little bit faster. Um, I usually like to wait until it's about an inch over the edge of the bread pan, and it's not, it's not there yet, so... We're gonna give it just a little bit more time. All right, the bread is out of the oven. I'm just tipping it on its side. That's how I like to cool bread, but I can't do this one-handed, so. So this is how supper is turning, turned out tonight. We have the chicken noodle soup, and then the biscuits and gravy, the bread. And yeah, that's supper tonight. Our food's gonna be famous. <laughs> <laughs> so Maria and I are putting together the brandy slush for tomorrow. This is a new recipe. Just dip it in. Um, where, what happened to the little tag? Did you tear it off? Oh, this? Yeah. Hmm. It, it didn't even come off, did it? So first up, we boiled two cups of water, poured it over four tea bags, and let that steep for five minutes. Then we put seven cups of water into a Dutch oven, brought that to a boil with two cups of sugar. Once the sugar was dissolved, we're just adding in one thawed can of orange juice con concentrate and one thawed can of lemonade concentrate. And then I poured in the one and two thirds cups of brandy, 
along with one fourth cup of lime juice. And now that the tea bags have steeped for five minutes, I'm pouring that in as well. Oh. Give it a stir. I just tasted it and that is delicious. Okay, that looks really good. Mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> the so tea the... gives it just a depth of flavor and really mellows out the sweetness. So it's Peter and me now, and we are just wrapping up meat. So this is all of the meat that Warren and him cut up earlier today. And I think, Peter, is that almost all going to be hamburger except for those couple roasts there? Yes, yeah, so it's roast, roast, hamburger. So one thing I just wanted to point out when you're um, butchering your own meat is to pack it the way it's going to be best for your family. So I say this the same when I'm canning. If your family is going to eat a whole quart, then pack it like that. If you only eat pints at a time, pack your food like that. So the same goes with venison. If you are not big roast eaters, then either cut the roasts into steaks or grind it. It makes the most delicious lean, um, I guess I would call it almost like a ground sirloin or something. So just very makes very, very good hamburger. But I like to pack it in a variety of sizes as well. So you can see I have roast, a three pound roast, a one and a half pound roast. We have a whole back strap here a pack of six Ooh. venison steaks. Before, when I was packing with Maria, we packed one, I think that might have even had eight venison steaks. We may end up at the end with a pack with five. I just like to have a variety, and I like to pack it how I know my family's going to eat it. So, like for example, when we had all seven kids at home, I would always pack my steaks um, like 10 or more steaks because I knew that most of us would have one but like some of the teens and Warren would like to have two steaks if it was a year we didn't get a lot of deer I would pack it just one steak per person and we would make sure that we uh, uh, added on you know with other things applesauce baked potatoes green beans from the garden whatever it is so all I'm saying here is just pack your venison in a way that you're going to want to eat it. Uh, one time we did get some beef and it was just not labeled well and I never knew what I was going to get. And I would unwrap like, like something like this. I'd unwrap it thinking that that was gonna be a roast for the family and it would be almost all bone and like no meat. And so that was really disappointing and that was really like a lesson for me um, I mean, I didn't wrap or I didn't pack that meat, but that was kind of one of those moments where I was like, yes, it is so important when you're feeding your family to go to the freezer and pull out something that you actually want to cook. Pack your meat, whatever is best for your family. Why are you shaking hamburger in my face? <laughs> Just because you can. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but also labeling is so important. Make sure you label or I mean, not make sure, but this is what I do, is I like to label that it's venison, what it is, how many there might be, how what the pounds are, and the year. Because, you know, sometimes you pull out or you find a recipe that calls for a something or another pound roast. It's just nice to know exactly, uh, again, it's just nice to have the exact information on the package. Four more and then almost, almost done. We actually won't grind hamburger until Friday. Peter's back. You come back because you're cold? No. No? Uh, I came back because I had uh, group two coyotes walk through and messed up my whole hunt. I see. Okay. Uh. Good morning, everybody, and happy Thanksgiving. First, let me just say I'm so thankful for all of you who come here, watch my videos, just kind of like live life with me i guess and just leave all your all the sweet comments and i just know that there's so many people out there that just appreciate family vlogs so 8 35 i'm gonna get the turkey in the oven we're actually not eating until four o'clock but i want to make sure that we're not eating at 4 30. i want to make sure we're eating actually maybe even 15 minutes early would be fantastic and so the plan is going to be to roast up the turkey 
and then give it like 15 minutes to rest so it can absorb all the juices and then carve it and then probably put it right back into this tray and then keep it in the oven at a very low temperature just to keep it warm. All right, here's what I have. 21 pound butter ball here and I have some carrots. Now, would I would it be better to just use a whole carrot? Sure, but I have these cut up and I don't have any plans for them right now, so I'm just gonna use these, have some garlic. Would the recipes out there call for whole garlic cloves? Yes, they would, but this is what I have. I have some celery here, and I have one tiny little onion with a little bit of already chopped red onion in here that I just want to use up, and so I'm also gonna put that into my turkey. I'm gonna do it in a roasting bag, so I have to put a tablespoon of flour in here, I also am going to loosen up this uh, breast skin here, and not from this side though, I'll loosen it up from the, from the neck side there, and I'm going to grab some butter, and I'm going to rub butter underneath the breast in here, um, salt and pepper it under there, and kind of then press the, press the skin back into place before I put it into the bag. So I just set my oven to 325. If the butter ball calls for 325 degrees, the directions for the roasting bag calls for 350 degrees. So I just, I, I'm gonna go with this temperature. 325 and 18 to 22 is three and a half to four hours. So I'm going to roast mine for four hours. We'll give it a 15 minute rest. And since Warren is all, um, all freshened up with butchering. Maybe he'll actually carve the turkey for me. That would be great. And then I'm going to put it back into um, the roasting pan. I think. I say that now. I do want the juices to make gravy though. Well, I just want to show you how simple I just brought up a few little decorations. I didn't even bring up the big tote of decorations this year. I just went down and I'd grab like three things and I'd bring them up and put them on the table in whatever way it would work out. So on this one table here, which this may be slightly large, it's hard to see with the, with the lighting right now, but I have this like little cornucopia here with um, this little bear paw, I think that's what it's called, a bear paw pattern quilt that I had made years ago. And then over here on this table, I mean, this is as simple as it really, really can get. So just a few little pumpkins. Now that I think about it, I should probably switch. I feel like I should switch this up because we have a wider table and can still put our food down. Okay, I'm gonna do that in just a second. Last year we put them yeah. on the plate. Well, however, but the plate should be centered with the chair. Ooh, sorry, centered with the chair and about an inch back from the edge. Okay. That's how it looks the neatest. What do you want it? And then over on this table here, just brought up a little hodgepodge of, of pumpkins that I have gathered over the years. And then Maria put out the Cardinal Salt and Pepper Shaker. We made little name cards here for everybody. Well, Maria and then Bo, he's one of the hunters that comes, that's here. Together they were working on making little name cards. We got a little punch station set up over here. So I'm going to be putting, um, well, I'll be putting like the the non-alcoholic punch in here. We're putting ice water in this one, and then we'll be doing punch. I have, well, that brandy slush I'll be putting in this one here. Just started to bring out a couple of the things, like this is the squash. I just want this to kind of sit on the top of the stove to kind of just gradually warm up throughout the day. I brought in the wild turkey, and I have that on low because I want to get that warming. I'm going to warm up the leftover soup from last night's supper so that we can all have a little something here right now. And I didn't really plan any appetizers or anything. Maybe somebody will bring an appetizer, I don't know. I just didn't really plan anything like that for today. I do have probably some black olives and pickles though I could put those out. 
oh, what else can we do? What else can we do? Um, and now I think we're just gonna uh, attack the laundry pile. Yesterday I washed four or five loads of laundry. None of it got folded, so I think that's what we'll do next. So Maria and I mixed up some punch. This, we agreed, is the worst color punch you could ever, ever make. Literally. So we used a can of orange juice concentrate, a packet with some sugar of a grape Kool-Aid, and, and then we used, also uh, used a jar of straight cranberry juice. And that's the color you get when you mix all those things together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is, <laughs> there is nothing pretty about that. No, like you go to parties or something that have punch. <laughs> And it should be, and it's like all pretty, pretty. With the it should red, be red or orange, or like orange, right? Like pink or stuff. They're so pretty, and this is like you know. <laughs> so, pretty. is anybody gonna drink it? Me, I tried it. It's good. So at this point, I this would be my favorite time to just turn the turkey over to somebody else. This is my least favorite time. Is wrestling with this, figuring out where to put this already baked turkey, carving it. Transferring drippings all of that. I, I just have to say that's my least favorite part of the whole thing, but Warren is in from hunting and I think <laughs> It's not even my turkey. <laughs> it's not even my turkey. I made the gravy just using the pan drippings So can you hand me that piece of paper there? Okay, thank you so this is the recipe. I just followed right what Butterball said for the turkey gravy um, separating off the fat from like the combined drippings. So yeah, just follow the directions right here. And it worked, worked great. It tastes good. I think it might need a little bit more salt and pepper, but we'll taste it again and adjust those seasonings as necessary. Warren is going to carve up the turkey for me. So what we're gonna do is just put it right back into the tray. Make sure that's not a hole, is it? No. Okay, he's just going to put it right back into this foil pan. Looking for the joint there. Yeah. Did you see who it was? Ooh. Hey, that's nothing compared to yesterday. Wow. I don't really like my carving skills on display. <laughs> That's all right. Real life. Yeah. Sometimes it goes better and sometimes not so better. That doesn't make sense. Not so better? Not so better. Mom, did you say 140 or 145? 145, sweetie pie. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. You guys got five? Yeah. Way to go. Wow. Girls. One of those I threw in there. <laughs> yes. Did on purpose? No. No. <laughs> Look at how pretty that one is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what this is what punch is supposed to look like, isn't it? Hands. And they do that kind of.
Well, good morning. I hope that your Thanksgiving was a joyful time. I hope it was filled with great conversation. Three of us women at our Thanksgiving celebration last night were talking about how when there are added people to your family group for Thanksgiving, it really changes up all the conversations because, you know, families can get kind of stuck in the stuck in a rut talking about the same types of things you guys have you all have like the same experiences and everything and the and the same like history and past right but it's really neat when there are people that are outside of the family part of a, like a, a big celebration like that because the conversations just go in so many directions and it was just such a great time we had such so much fun it is about 20 to 10 here on Friday now and I have a few things to clean up yet we did a really great job cleaning up last night but I have like I have to put away the punch bowl and <laughs> this this punch that we made we did drink almost all of it here but we we named it ugly punch because when you mix grape Kool-Aid, orange juice, and cranberry juice together, it pretty much just turns mud puddle brown. Um, it still tasted good, but not as it was not as good as Emily's punch. I definitely want to have Emily get a link in the upcoming newsletter to that punch. It was so delicious. I've never seen a punch recipe call for almond extract, which just brought a whole another flavor to the punch. It was just phenomenal. Okay, what else did I want to tell you? You know, for me, who puts a lot of family life in that, and I, I capture a lot of that in video, when you have a very large group, it's very hard to capture video. And so if it seems like this video was just all over the place and kind of choppy, and then sometimes there's sound and sometimes there's music over it, it's just because there's a lot of people in the house. Uh, we had yesterday we were a group of 21 and of course not everybody wants to be on camera uh, you know I'm trying to capture kind of the moment anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed this I hope that your Thanksgiving was just a wonderful day and I just want to say thank you to all of you for continuing to come back and just uh, bless me with your presence and your comments and everything is just so fun it, it makes for a lot of fun conversation for us around here to talk about so many of you as if we know you personally. <laughs> so you guys have a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye!